What's up, brother? I like that beard. Thank you. I wish I had it. Are we, are we doing? Are we doing competition of deep voices? Because I think I do. <laughs> oh, man, let's do this, Christian. I don't know. I think you might win. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Mike Cortez, my favorite guy in the world. I miss you, Mike Cortez. I miss your smiling, happy face yesterday during my event that you weren't there. See, he's not even listening to me. I compliment him. Tell him he's pretty. He's got me on mute. I'm going to call his boss behind him. I like those textures you got in the background. Hey, man, they're real deal, bro. I bought them offline, man. They um, call it Vori, and uh, they're pill and stick, dude. Yeah, I've been seeing a whole bunch of guys get them in the rooms. They look dope. Yeah, until they fall in the middle of a cast. <laughs> and then they sound like, Mike. 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 Yo, what's going on, David? Did you hear me at all? Did you hear me at all? No, I just barely connected to the audio, my bad. I was complimenting how much I, I've missed I you. I was complimenting how, how much I've missed you. Um, yesterday we had that event with uh, yesterday we had that event with the council and you know Shelly from City uh, Magazine and, 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 and I was like asking oh, questions. I look around like asking questions. No mic. No mic. No mic. No mic. No mic. I saw the uh, yeah I saw the turnout and stuff. It looked like a cool event. How, how'd it go? It was good. We had like uh, you know, like forty people there. We had like uh, more because Cassandra was running for real life again. So I was like, I get Mike meets Christian. Christian is a manager. Mike works. I'm, I'm working with Mike is one of my uh, longtime mentees. First time caller. Long time listener. First time caller. Nice to meet you, man. For a couple more people, hopefully. How's it going, man? A couple more people, hopefully. I like this uh, this background, David. What what is this? <laughs> It's a uh, it's sticker panels. It's, called, I, it's from my uh, worry. It's sticker panels. I put this on my wall. I put this on my wall. Basically, basically one size wall. sticker. Basically, one size three D. Three D. It's dope. Yeah, it's dope. It makes a it makes a big difference on the uh, visual. Oh, does it? Yeah, try to try to work on oh, this. Better. Yeah, try to try to work on this. So let me see. Oh, there's only two people today. That's great. Let's see who else is joining. What's half your team, Christian? You said, where's my team or how's yeah, my team? Half the team? Huh? You said, where's my team or how's the team? How's the team? Uh, they're doing okay. <laughs> Just been in talks oh. with a lot of free agents today. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they are just been hanging out because it's off season for God. <laughs> hey, Jordan, how are you, bud? Doing well, I'm doing well. I actually clicked the, like, the wrong link by accident. <laughs> That's okay. Not a problem. Let's see who else is joining. Just give it a couple minutes, guys. Hey, David, when's the next time you're going to end up in uh, Phoenix? Uh, I'm supposed to be down there. I'm supposed to have a call with Joey, I think, Monday or Tuesday. If Joey's there, you can ask him if it's Monday or Tuesday because I got two, I got two, uh, two appointments. Um, but um, I'll be there hopefully the uh, first of the month. I should be in all of October, man, or, or a big part of October because I haven't been in my house there in like three months, dude. So we can definitely are – you, are, you, are you downtown? Yeah, the, the office is downtown, but I, I live fairly close to the area. So I like it here. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good to hear. I'll yeah. be back there. So then, you know, I'll probably end up swooping by the office and seeing you and everyone else there. So work on the 
thing. <laughs> see if it works. I'll see if it works. I can't get that beer that Christian's got, so I'm very jealous of it. Uh, two more minutes. All right, well, more people joining in, but I don't, there, I don't know if we mix max our sessions and I'm gonna have to figure that out in my life. So as it's happening, we'll just keep going from there. How's, uh, how's everyone's week going so far? Uh, yeah. Doing good so far. So let's do this as if, if other people are, who are messaging me and saying they're running late, but why don't, we, why don't we start with some questions, at least the three of you guys can get in, you know, that might be specific for your industry or things that you want. Um, or things that you're, you're questioning about. And then as we're going into it, then I'll go into uh, the lesson of the day and kind of go from there. But why don't we start off with that first as we're waiting for other people. Uh, I guess I can go first. Um, I, I finished the book today, the Disney Good. book. Which the one? Disney, the Disney book. How'd you like I it? I liked it a lot. Actually, uh, last, last week I, um, I did the... The five, love, the five love languages quizzes, the quiz with, with the wife and stuff. So we we're able to figure out some things about ourselves, which is cool. And um, apparently, you know, I'm a surface guy. So, you know, so, um, so that's really, that was really cool. But the, but the actual takeaways from the Disney book were just really interesting. And so one of the, so one of the things is that I guess I'd be curious is like, you know, one of the things is, you know, everything walks the talk. And so, you know, how, so like, I guess, or even bigger than that, how, how have you incorporated some of those concepts into your own business? And so, you know, especially like specifically like, yeah, like everything walks the talk or, um, you know, everybody's your competitor. So that, that's good to know. I know Mike's a big reader. Christian, I don't know if you had a chance to read it, but Christian, if you, if you haven't, I would tell you for what you're trying to do and where you're at, that book was pivotal in my business life. It changed a lot of my output. Have you had a chance to read it yet, Christian? No, but I ordered it. Good, good that book was so pivotal in how, and how I worked it. And, and like I said earlier in, in, in our last sessions, uh, it was such a big issue. I told you one of my best friends said, had he read that book three years ago, he probably wouldn't be divorced today because the love language is so off, right? So then we start realizing about that book, you start realizing how to communicate with team members, staff members, guests, significant others. To me, it was the number one sales, number one way for me to start doing sales because I understand the human psyche over uh, just making the sell. So that's why that book is so significant and, and, and more so obviously for some of the things that we're trying to do. So that in itself and its bread and butter are magical and, and everything that we have put together. Um, so I'm glad you asked that question. Mike, do you have a question you wanna start off with? You wanna start off with? Yeah, well, we're on the topic of, um, I guess, finding some good sources of information. Uh, I know you mentioned a while back about there's certain publications that you subscribe to. I think it was like the uh, New York business or the economist. 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 Okay. Do, do you have any other recommendations like, like that one? Have you read the economist yet? Have you read the economist yet? I, I just subscribed to it the past week, but I haven't uh, started reading the articles. So I'm trying to make it part of my daily routine. So I'm just kind of like trying to revamp how I do my mornings now. Yeah, uh, The Economist is great for obviously what it does on an international level. It'll tell you tra trends and things like that. Um, I actually read a lot of industry stuff that's particularly towards me, so I understand the industry stuff. If you're trying to get a global knowledge and a global appeal, I mean, obviously Forbes is, is one that I read. I have a subscription to. Forbes gets you up to date on what you're at. Um, but typically what I do is I do Economist for a global perspective, which helps me with all my businesses. Forbes, I understand the U.S. side. I have something that's, you know, it's called China Business Week, but that's obviously because I deal with China. And then the other thing I read is industry stuff that's specific for the industry. So, so if you have anything that's industry specific, that's what it would be, but definitely try to get Forbes. Uh, that helps a lot. It gives you the aspirations. People, you know, you don't ever hear people say, um, you know, if you haven't made it a fortune, you haven't made it. It's if you haven't made it a Forbes, you haven't made it, right? So Forbes in itself is, is a brand that works really, really well. And I think that's going to be quite beneficial what you're trying to do. Cool, man. Thanks. No problem. 
Um, what about you, Christian? You have any questions? You would let me unmute myself. There we go. Um, yeah, actually, something me and Matt were kind of talking about um, because, I mean, as you know, right now, nuclear isn't making any money. The goal is to make money. Um, so part of that is um, I'm looking at signing a lot of streamers, maybe like 20 to 30 total. Um, however, part of the difficulty with that um, in terms of finding people who are at least affiliated and maybe have 20 or more subscribers at least um, is, you know, why should I be signing with you guys? And so with streamers who have Call of Duty, that's easy for us. Um, I'm not going to lie, I use your name a lot, as you can see. But, um, and, uh, you know, we're able to, you know, talk about NACL and then David Meltzer also with that. So when we go to talk to Call of Duty guys, it's, you know, somewhat easy to do. Um, but when it comes to other games, where obviously we're not known in that community, especially since we've only been around for so long, it's difficult to not even just get them on the same page as us to see what they were around or it's difficult to just approach them and get some type of response to have a dialogue. So I was kind of wondering what your recommendations would be towards reaching out to those people that might not necessarily know us. I, I think, I think this is going to be a, a constant with any business. And I think this is, that's actually a very valuable question that doesn't pertain to just esports, but it does with podcasts. It does with business in general and development of business. The three of you are all in business development in your respective fields. Right? Everything is sales. Everything is business development. And that's one thing that I, I am very fortunate enough to excel in. Um, for your particular case, I think the structure is, is important. I think, you know, when I talked to Matt about this, about finding guys that get characters and, and to have a minimum amount of streams because viewership and content is there, it's the ability to tell them that they can apply and play for leagues that we are open to specifically that you guys can try out for. So what I mean. What is the one thing these guys all want? <clears throat> Fame, make it to an org. So in your guys' podcast and business, what's the one thing they want? It's fame or money, right? Or to get the message across. There's always three types of people. So when I tell you that is, when you read that book, you're going to be able to identify, um, you're gonna be able to ad identify really, 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 really quickly what their love language is and what they can do and what they can say and maybe the way you're saying it is wrong or the, the way they're receiving it is wrong that's why this book is so critical in the beginning of anything i do with with the mentorship sessions um the second thing is you can't force someone to understand your vision unless you truly understand your vision let me tell you what i mean by that last week we talked about you know the ability and the opportunity to where we're working or we're kind of growing and, and we have things together and you have to tell that story for the next three years, like the, the Academy Award winner from Bow did. And then she had to convince people for seven minutes of, you know, that it was all going to air, that it was going to make it work. Right. So your story, what is the end story? What does everybody want? Call of Duty, it works because Meltzer owns one of the teams. I have a team. We all know Gary. That's another team. We have another friend that owns a team. There's four opportunities that literally Team Nuclear can go through. I'm sorry, guys, one second. That Team Nuclear can go through and literally has orgs so they can get to the next level, right? Those are direct affiliations, and that's how you're pitching and selling. The other ones, it has to be a deeper dive into research. If you give me, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. When I identified the process, what, what made me separate from CSL, which is my biggest competitor, was that these guys were giving out prize money, but they weren't part of the community. They didn't understand that what the client wants. And your client is the guys you're trying to sign on, right? So you gotta look at them as a client. Either they sell you on why this won't work or you'll sell them on why it will work. That's it, it's only two sells, right? So. You have to understand them by first understanding their research and the things that they do. And that's a social media understanding to then engage with them in the ability to have a connection. My connection with you guys is esports. Mike and I's connection came very naturally because he met me through business. Jordan and I, I was a speaker for Jordan um, 
uh, and, and then we connected afterwards because of what I was saying. Your connection has to be with your audience. So your connection on Call of Duty is very different because you understand that game. But if it's another game and whatever game it is, you have to give them that connection. So let me, let me tell you what I mean by that. So one thing that I don't even know I told Matt this yet, and I think I have because I'm just so tired. But what I told Matt was I said, listen, the one thing I want to tell you is guys can try out if you have Rocket League, PUBG, or FIFA, the winner of our five-month league, Open Invitational, gets to try out for a pro team, the Wolves team from the English Premier League. You see that? I gave them something, and I'm not just talking about the U.S. guys. I have now Europe. And then the FIFA team is actually owned by Alibaba and Weibo. Everyone knows Alibaba and Fosun. And now they can try out for a team in China. You see what I just did? I took one thing. I have FaZe. I've never sat there and said anything about FaZe, right? Even though everyone knows I have them in my back pocket. We have Meltzer in Toronto and Toronto, right? Overwatch, Call of Duty. Now he's, he owns League of Legends. We're working on that deal. And now we have more Europe and now I have China. I single-handedly grew my global brand by partnering with guys that I know that trust me, right? So your answer is, well, if you play those three particular games, you are invited a guaranteed spot in the open invitational for NACL where you get to try out for a pro league and we're developing that league for you. That's one. Pitch two is, did you know that in social, did you know that social media that you have here is completely and utterly illegal in China? It doesn't exist. So did you know that NACL, when you feature and you're playing these tournaments through our partnership with Team Nuclear, will get you a million and a half viewers every single time we do something. You see what I just did? I gave you a hope and I gave you an instantaneous access that no one else in this world has. That's how I was able to get Mark Cuban to do that. Then you say, look at the guys who are behind it. You want to grow and develop. There's a reason we've aligned ourselves with this guy. Look at the celebrities he's brought in. Oh, you don't care about the celebrities? Great. Well, they at least own four of the largest teams in the world. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, Christian, I'm talking to everyone else in the gaming team. Like, Mischief, Evil Geniuses, um, uh, uh, Liquid. I mean, I've talked to all these cats and we're working on similar things. And then we, we have the opportunity to go pro. So if it's Dota 2, they get to compete in China. And again, I don't know what games you're as a picking because I, I never, Matt told me, but I don't remember the top of my head. And then add value. If they're playing FIFA, if they're playing Madden, what matters to you more? Yes, you can win $500 every single time you win a prize. But our grand prize this year is a five month league and the winner gets to try out and play with Pavon Lockett, who's the number two, three, one player in the world in Madden, and then meet our NFL players. They get to hang out with Aaron Jones and Alvin Jones, right? NBA, they get to hang out with Rick Barry and they get to play with Shockey who plays in the 2K league. You see what I did? I added value with the things I have, not the things I don't. And I understand that my extremities are very, very high, but nobody taught me to do that. I just know how to do that because I have to add value. That's why that book is so significant. And that's why every client and every guest you're talking to and every business deal is how do I add value? And what is my, what is my purpose of talking to Christian? Or what is my purpose of talking to Mike and Jordan? If the three of you were in three different sessions, my engagement and the things I would talk about would be very different and that's why I have these general overall discussions because that's the things I can talk about, right? So that's another thing. You want to know what else we did? We just did that merch collab with Mark Cuban, right? That's the biggest merch collab in college sports. We're so big, we're on the Arkansas State's website. So now I'm, I'm organically in the universities and now they're asking me to teach. And I have 15 other teams that want to be associated with Mark Cuban. Ely is your hit. He plays for the Colts. So you're so there should be a team outing at their NFL guys where like when everyone can get together and they get to hang out with you guys in a day in a city and, and Ely's there and I'll show up and they can just hang out like like a team nuke session for a day or two. You got to teach them how to develop. And the way you're teaching them to develop is here's the end goal. Here's how we can help you in the short side. But by the way, here's how we're gonna get you brand exposure. And this is who we're associated with. That's why, that's why I did it with you guys. I like you guys, right? I mean, I get five orgs that hit me up probably a day at this point. And I 
out of all the workers, it was you guys. And I was like, just because I like Matt, right? And, and, and he's, Moreno's his agent, this is my partner. So that's how you have to build the story with what you have. That's what you do, you know? Um, that, that's what matters. And I think that's the most important part of it. And I'll, I hope that answered your question. It does, it helped a lot. I mean, thank you. <laughs> no, no, no problem. Do you guys want to continue questions or do you want me to keep, or do you want me to go over today's format? I mean, I don't really care. I, I, I can do both. What do you have? I, mean, uh, I don't really care. I, I, I can do both. What do you have planned for today, David? Um, just, 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 just some, some other things um, I was going to talk about, but uh, on one of the particular deals I had, but you know, maybe, maybe the questions could be the, you know, maybe you guys want to ask questions and you guys have 30 minutes to utilize as many questions as you want to get very specifics on your, on your industry. Right. That might be, that might be the best thing. And we can then just do the lesson next week when everyone can join, join back on. Hmm. All right. Um, and if you don't have any questions, I can jump forward. I, I think I'd be, if you don't uh, have any questions, I can jump forward. I have a, a few questions about partnerships, David. Um, that's something that I'm picking up on, especially here with uh, Joey and uh, Jonathan. We're starting to build partnerships as far as, you know, how do we make win-win solutions that are uh, ethical, but also reasonable for both sides, right? So I'm curious how you do partnerships in your deals, um, maybe on the lines of uh, these current operations you have going on, but just in general, I think that would be good input. So it, it depends on what you're doing, what industry, but I'll tell you, you know, the Mark Cuban thing, what's separated from everyone else is I identify that Mark is an esports, but he's skeptical about esports, right? And Mike is a friend of mine who is his partner in clothing. And Mike owns a great the company. So what I did with Mike was a typical market style play for clothing because I was partners with Justin Timberlake and I was in clothing for many, many years. I know is no more than six to 10% of what you're going to get out of the sales. I know this as a fact. So you got to make them an offer that they can't refuse. That's my simple answer. So when I went to Arkansas State, after I developed the relationship, which I explained last week how I developed it, I ended up offering them a third of the profits. I think 20% less. Now you're gonna ask, you're gonna say, well, you're crazy. Why, why would you take, why would you offer less? Because on a PR side for the esports community, 33% of profits from Mark Cuban's clothing brand is astonishing, right? I am organically helping these esports teams and these universities get funding. That's pitch one. That's their vision, their side. And number two, by the way, you're associated with me and you're also associated with my partners and you're associated with Mark Cuban, who now, if you really have top sales, there's another brand deal that will happen, right? They're not jumping over me because I command the loyalty because I own the relationship. But what they're doing is they're allowing me to, they're entrusting in me because of my ability to say that I'm going to do and if they do a good enough job, Mark would be very interested in growing the brands. You see what I just did there? <clears throat> now, for Mark's side, it's skeptical for Mark, but if Mark gets what he does, it, it blows up. Not that everyone needs to know who Mark is, but not everybody knows who Mark Cuban is. And so what it does is it blows up his, his struggling clothing line, if it's struggling, but I mean, I know numbers, and it puts him in a space that he wants to get into organically through my access. You see that? What is, what can I offer Mark? I offer you universities, man. That's what I offer you. And by the way, I have 220 universities in 20 countries. You see where my added value is when it comes to business. I'm organically putting your product in place in universities minus all the hoopla I'm going straight to the source through esports. Now, number three for NACL, what NACL's idea was for you to do this with me, you have to put NACL jersey logo on all your team jerseys. So now Arkansas State Esports has NACL there. ASU has NACL there. My 10 other universities has NACL there, organic food press. I get a third of the profits and I get to now say that I put together a clothing deal with Mark Cuban. What does the side want? That's your question. 
it does, no side ever wants to feel that they're, that they're getting gypped. And everybody wants, because of their ego, what is owed to them. And when people don't get what's owed to them, that's when the morale starts having problems, employees, team members, staff, right? Does that sound familiar to your industry, Christian, or your industry, Jordan? They don't feel like they got their, their just deserved, right? So now they're upset. Well, it's simple. Break off a little bit more for everyone else. The model works. Look at Microsoft. The guys who got stock in the beginning are multimillionaires. They have to believe in the model. And so if you can do that, and if you're that confident in your thing, I'll take less percentage. You have to hit all your numbers and make a little bit of money. But who's to say that after you enter the market, that won't be the reason that you'll dominate the market? I've proven it time and time again with things I've done, right? You have to humble yourself a little bit more in, in new markets and areas, give a little bit more, command loyalty. And the most important part is, what are they going to do? They're going to ditch you for another brand because they're going to get 33% somewhere else? No way in hell are they going to get 33% somewhere else. That's how I did it. You got to understand the people, man. That's why these books are so important. And I hate reading. So the fact that I'm telling you to read it is what it is. But that's how I would initially go from there and make people work. It has to be win-win for all, or there's no win, or there's no win at all. Right? That's just the truth. So that's how I would do it. Jordan, are you gonna say something? Yeah, I was just gonna. Yeah, I was just a little curious. And so, I mean, beyond these books, you know, what you know, what do you credit to your this kind of business intuition that you have? <laughs> no, honestly, dude. It's working in the restaurants. Hmm. Growing up in a restaurant was probably the best thing I could have ever done because it made me really think in multitudes that were unable to, to do it. Have you worked in a restaurant? Have any three of you guys worked in a restaurant before? A sort of Pizza Hut. <laughs> okay, where'd you work at, Christian? Uh, I hop. <laughs> Mike, where'd you work at? Never worked in a restaurant. The closest thing would probably be the movie theaters for me. Okay, so hear me out when I tell you this. All three are customer experience, right? The customer experience is people walk in there because they want to watch a movie or they want to work at IHOP or they want to go eat at IHOP and they want to work at Pizza Hut. Your defining experience is the way you treat your customer. How do you know that? Because it's your tip. Your defining audience is the ability to understand that that tip is the most valuable thing for you that's there. Right? So as you have that tip, that's how you identify what you get and where you're trying to go. Right? That's your personal service, your own ability to do so. So if you're getting, if you're getting big and giant tips, what you've done then is you've had the ability to literally sit there and make yourself, you know, the, the opportunity to show what your skill sets are because your tips might be better than other people's. But the big difference is, isn't necessarily just that. The big difference that when you put together and you're trying to identify the brands and going from there is your ability to literally offset yourself in a marketplace so that other people come back to you because you're their favorite server. And what the restaurant did for me was it taught me service and detail through service. And it taught me to think ahead of the game. Let me give you an example. The most annoying thing for me in a restaurant is when I am thirsty and I look down on my cup and here's my cup and the cup is down to 20% and a good server knows to serve that refill that water because my job is in the service industry. So I'm already anticipating in the back of my mind that Jordan sat down first and within 10 minutes, if they don't have drinks, Christian, who now comes in, I have 10 minutes of time, I had to go back to Jordan to fill up his drink. I checked. I double check, right? As a server, you double check to see if the client's happy. That's business. Without you even asking, without the client raising their hands and saying, hey, can I get water? They're literally, you, you, if you're a good server, you're already double checking to make sure that they're already being served. That in itself is a business proposition that you have to understand because you should be pre-serving the customer before the customer asks. That goes with streamers, that goes with, 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 with any brand. The other thing is, 
if you ever worked in the kitchen, that's what I grew up in. You take one piece of, I'll, I'll tell you, this is the funniest thing. Mike, are you still there? You're frozen. Well, anyways, I'll tell you what it is. Everybody here's had beef and broccoli, right? Right. Okay. Has every, oh, I knew it was a joke. Has, has, has everyone's had beef and broccoli? Has, has everyone here also had compound chicken? Okay, let me tell you, let me tell you the Chinese way of doing business. We grab the broccoli. I'm gonna watch, this is how detailed we get. Efficiency. We cut off this, the top part, the crown, and we mix that up with the beef and broccoli. You know what we do with the stem? We shave it off, we cut it into quarters, and that's the shit that's in beef and broccoli. That's the shit that's in cold pot chicken. You see what I did? Efficiency. Didn't waste. So the restaurant business taught me how to think in multiple, multiple things, because one person I have to serve, different start. The other person is getting their dessert, different start. I have to go double check in the kitchen for the order. I have to double check the client for the order. I have to make sure they get paid. I have to make sure that if I'm working in the kitchen, I'm utilizing and maximizing my ability and my business. The only difference between me and everyone else is I didn't shit on the restaurant business because that's what, that's what made me eat. That's why I talk about attitude. When I break down for you what I just said, and now you guys in the back of your head saying, oh shit, that makes sense. That's why they're doing it that way. And how you cookie cut it and put a different issue. That's why I've been successful in different industries because I use the same mentality for every industry. It doesn't matter if I'm the big dog in esports or if I'm the big dog in crypto. All that matters is my service. That's why you guys can all relate to me because of my service. My service is providing real world insight, right? That's my service. That's how I separate and go from there. So if you go back to those life lessons, anytime you look at something, you should be always reflecting and saying, how can I make this better? If it's not working, what am I not doing to identify with that brand and make it work? I mean, it could be as long as like any sales round for like a year at this point. And I literally had to redo all our decks and break it down to elementary level thinking because I realized at that point in time that not everyone understood it, but they were rocking with me because they liked it. Mm. You see what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. the way you have to, you have to break it down and reflect for the most part, listen, if you're not going to buy it, no one's going to buy it. If your mom's not going to buy it, no one's going to buy it. If your brother's not going to join the team, no one's joining the team. So you got to make it work for the people around you that will buy it. And if they'll buy it, then the mass majority will buy it because the people around you are always going to be the most skeptical around you. I, that's yeah, that's a, I like that a lot. I, I appreciate that, David. No problem. Ivanska, we're, we're just asking questions right now. Cause we had a lot of people, I mean, I apologize for the mix up session. I'll finally get that figured out this week. But if you have any questions, Ivanska, you're more than welcome to ask. Um, and, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you, David. No problem. Um, and these are just general business questions. That's what people are asking. Uh, Mike and Christian, do you have another question? Actually, yeah. Um, this might be a little bit of a pivot, but I mean, you're a guy who hires people. So, um, I know before we had talked about how I'm graduating in December um, with my degree in petroleum engineering. And um, a friend of mine who just graduated um, this last spring, he did his internship with Chevron two summers in a row. He's gone offshore and drilled wells personally. Um, his dad um, is a reservoir engineer. And now we're here in September and he himself is still without a job. Yep. And then, you know, I'm graduating with the same degree as him. And I mean, I've done zero internships. Yep. I mean, I've applied everywhere. I just didn't, I don't know anybody in the industry. Um, so as a person who hires people, I guess what I'm wondering is how do I get involved or make myself look different and stand out when I don't have any experience? Be likable. I, I honestly say that be likable, right? Like if they like you and, and you can mesh, and this is why your training at team nuclear is so significant. If you pre identify what they want and what they're missing, that is the same skill set as pre identifying a place that wants to hire you, what they want and what they're missing. See, same thing, right? Same coordination. Okay. 
Now, if you identify what they want, what they need, and they like them, what you should be doing right now is you should be joining any, I mean, like Roughnecks don't really care about COVID as much as anyone else does. So I'll tell you, any association that involves O and G in your sector, and you should be joining that. And you yeah, should I mean, I'm in IADC, I'm in SPWLA, I'm in SPE, I'm in all the organizations, and I've been in there for four years. And how's that? And I, I've gone to every event, I've met everybody. It was a whole bunch of malarkey. <laughs> Why do you say it's malarkey? Um, you know, they, it, it's basically what has been for four years with all these organizations is we're going to sit down and we're going to have your know, presentation on this or that or the other. And it literally is something that we've, and you know, they're not bringing in a specialist, you know, there's not an expert to talk to. It's here's a PowerPoint we got from wherever we're going to sit down and go through it. And, but it's stuff we've gone over in our classes. And the whole point of joining these organizations is, hey, we're going to bring in experts. Hey, you know, we're going to go tour these facilities, which we didn't do. The only facility tours we've done has been with one of our instructors um, named Randy, who has connections in the industries that, so like locally we've gone on rigs and locally we've seen different shops and stuff like that. But through those specific organizations, which are the three biggest in the U.S. Um, for oil and gas, I just haven't seen anything from it. We haven't met anybody. They haven't brought anybody in at least, you know, no, I mean, we, they had one person come in uh, from legacy drilling because um, he went to UL and he drilled all the wheels out in California and stuff like that. And he works in North Dakota doing geo steering. And I mean, I had a wonderful conversation with him because geo steering is what I'm interested in. Um, he gave me his business card and um, you know, that's, that's been about the only connection I've made in four years here. Okay. Let me ask you this. How many people are you messaging daily in the ONG industry on LinkedIn? None. I'm not on LinkedIn. It's your first biggest problem. Okay. You're in business, man. The first thing you should be in is LinkedIn. Okay. Right? Just like, why are you on Twitch and not on other platforms? Because Twitch is the joint for gaming. LinkedIn is the joint for what you're trying to do. What I would do on LinkedIn, and what's helped me a lot is, you put up your right photo because LinkedIn's LinkedIn is very different from Twitch, right? The right photo, you're putting down your resume and your information. You say you're part of the association. And what I would do is I would read different insights that you know of and give your insights on what's going on. You make yourself an expert. That's what I did. That's what I've done my whole entire life. I made myself the expert, right? So you talk about Blah, blah, blah. Here's my thoughts on ONG. Nothing controversial, nothing, no politics, no religion, nothing about anything. It's just straight ONG concepts, things like that. That's what you want to do because that's what's going to give people an insight. And they're going to be like, hey, this makes sense, Christian. You know, you know, let's talk about this and go from there. And the people you add on LinkedIn are ONG people from every, I don't care if it's a secretary to the CEO, you add every single person from every single ONG potential platform that you can freaking find out and you add them, eventually somebody's gonna do it. I'm gonna share a second insight. When someone puts something up, I'll give you an example. Let's say it's, uh, I don't know, the head of Exxon and he puts something up and you have real insight in that, in, in that drilling side, you tag them, their name on LinkedIn, and you literally write the insight, right? Whatever your, your thought process is. Now, it doesn't matter if he reads it, he doesn't read it, if he says anything, he doesn't say anything. What matters is somebody is going to read it and they're going to know that you're not a dum-dum, right? That's the way that you would do it with LinkedIn and your networking sessions that exist. And that's how I would do it and push it through. I don't, I agree that it might be malarkey, but at the same time, if an org is last that long, three times, you know, four different ones, three times, you know, you have to go back out there and reinitiate yourself and make that grow. And the word, and here's the other thing, Christian, you, you got to realize two other things. Just because you graduated, it doesn't mean you do the rest of your life. So yeah, you got to yeah. get that concept out of your head, number one. And number two, you know, it, it's a very hard time. If you read The Economist, especially you of all people should be reading it, you're going to see the ONG issues that are in Russia. The OPEC issues that are, that are in the Middle East, you know, 
than the Middle East. You're going to see that Saudi is having some problems with Qatar. You're going to see that China is trying to figure out the oil and gas issues as they're backing up Russia and they're trying to do the alliance with Mongolia, but Mongolia won't do it because it's China. You're going to see in South America what everyone's going to go from there. And that's why you read The Economist, because I know this stuff and I don't even, I'm not even ONG anymore. But you see what I just did? Now that you understand the platform, then you might not make you feel as bad because you're not, there's just not an opportunity to get a job right now, right? If mm -hmm. I based it on education and experience, I would have never been a, a managing partner at Deloitte because I had no experience. I had no education. I'm a college dropout. And at the end of the day, I was still a magic partner at Deloitte. I added value. I found things that were different. So if, if your new company is, is doing a new pipeline in North Dakota, understand North freaking Dakota. Understand the drilling, understand the shells, understand yeah, the it's rivals. Actually, because of him, I did my senior uh, design project on artificial lifts in the Balkan formation in North Dakota. Well, that, 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 well that's my point. My point is, <laughs> is whatever company you're trying to reach out to, identify an expertise because of looking for new people that are there. Right? That's how it works. And that's how I would do that. Gotcha. Thank you. No problem. Ivanska, Mike, question? Can the question be about anything? Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, so I do have an agency and what I do is custom websites, as you know. Mm -hmm. Everything is from, um, from zero. So it's very, how do I say it? It's more for for more the high-end clients. And, I, and it has been very successful. I've been doing really well. Uh, my team is doing really well, but I do wanna, I always wanna improve and I do wanna see what would you think that um, people would, would more like to see for a website or talking about a website in that sense, because right now I am doing a lot of DIYs, but that's not necessarily what I wanna do. I wanna obviously showcase customized website um you're, you're in a really interesting dilemma obviously you know you're at downtown spacey so what, what i would tell you is this the, the first thing is you got to understand the current situation environment that we're in which i know you do but let me, let me explain this to you to do a custom website it takes time and money right so if you want to reduce your fees you have to realize that most people in the market right now they cannot afford custom websites or there are other options like a Wix or whatever else to jump onto. So mm -hmm. the creative side isn't as valued and most people who cannot afford the website will jump to a cheaper thing. The issue mm -hmm. is the custom side of it. The issue is can I get my message out to my clientele? That's the question. And if I am starting a new business and you're a thousand bucks, but, but Mike is 500 bucks, I'm going to go with Mike if you guys have the same pedigree because it's cheaper. People are, are financially suffering that. Your spin though, is your advertising. So what I would do if I were you is I would, I would go find out, I would go talk to Shelly from City Magazine. I would go talk to Yazir. I would go talk to Rudy. I would go talk to um, um, Lavish who, who have all their website, have all their different branding stuff and say, hey, can we work out something together where you can push out my website branding to your 200,000 digital people in advance and get it that way? Or can I set up a referral thing for you guys to come on in with me and I will break you off a chunk of change, mm -hmm. right? That's the way that you can do it because they will have the, the eyes and the ears of the people at the cheapest cost. But for you to go out and look for people right now, it's, it's a virtually impossible game because nobody wants to add on websites because they can't afford it unless they're trying to start a new business and they're just really hungry entrepreneurs. But you have to add that value by decreasing the cost and increasing your brand model. And let me tell you something, it's word by mouth. So the fact that you can bring in someone new and that person's going to absolutely tell Christian how great you are and Mike how great you are, guess what's going to happen? That's how you grow, you, you grow your client base. Reduce your fees to match the market without losing money. But if you actually think about it, that's going to be more and more people that will, eat, that will end up working with you and eating off your plate. I see. That's what I would do. What, what, would, uh, 
could you repeat your first option? I heard the second option, which was obviously um, talk to those people and see if they, I can get referrals from them and obviously provide a, a fee for that to them uh, or give them a chunk, as you mentioned. What was the first option you said? Re reducing your, 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 your fees. Okay. Right? Understanding your current market situation, the environment that you're in. Let me give you an example. You're about a downtown spaces, two things that are gonna happen. For the brand ambassadors, you guys are running up, we're gonna cut our normal 300 to half the price so you guys can stay on, right? That's a, that's a sales tactic, but we're doing it because you guys can stay on and go from there. We're gonna get rid of half the other brand ambassadors. But the other thing is we're gonna do, do a fall special. So we're gonna reduce our fees by 20% because that's the way the market works, right? So, so it's not something that I'm telling you that I'm not, well, that we're not doing. It's just that we have to survive in the market and survival in this market is breaking even. If you make money, you're blessed, but it's literally, if you survive during this time, it's gonna show all the people that fell and who then will have all these clients that are looking around that you exist and then they'll come to you. Oh, and she disappeared. Might not agree with me there. That's okay though. Jordan, do you have a question or Christian? Yeah, um, um, I had a question. This is you know, kind of a little, little bit different than what I was talking about, but um, this is more about tech stuff. And so like, uh, you know, if somebody was to you know, bring, bring to you like, you know, like a, a description of a software or a description of a you know, new technology, you know, what would you expect to see? Like if you, if you wanted to be sold on, a, on, a, on, a, on a, like a new piece of technology, you know, like, uh, or in, in detail, like what kind of documentation, you know, would, would, it, would, it, would it take for you to kind of, you know, take this person seriously? I mean, I, I think the first thing- Does that make that, sense? Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, like, okay, I, I, like, let's say, yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, the internet's crazy today. No, no, I, I, I get I'll it, so, it so the, the first thing is, what is your expertise in the field? What have you already done? And if you have a great idea, but you haven't done anything, then the next thing is, you bring on someone that has a partnership that's done the field, right? Because you're actually in their context in the area. That, that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, you know, on a business plan side, you should have a full business yeah. plan so people understand the financials and going from there. There's a million great ideas every single day, Jordan. I'll say that right now. Yeah, and but there has to be, there has to be people correct. that have the, ideas. So yeah, so more specifically is that, you know, like, um, you know, for us, you know, this is, this is not related to CrossFit, this is my other thing that I'm doing. And so like, and so, um, you know, we, you know, we have, um, you know, people like people that advisors that have signed on and stuff like that. And um, people that are willing to take us to the life cycle, cycle of the company until we exit and all those other kind of things and stuff. But, um, but we, I'm drafting pretty much the, I'm right now I'm drafting a, a, just some documentation, right? And so there's like, so this, the, the actual specific, specific, specifics of, you know, the functional document, I guess, you know, and so, and um, I'm just saying like, you know, someone was, you know, come up with, you know, with you like an app, you know, and this, and this is how the app works, or, or, or if I have a new widget, and this is how the widget works, you know, like what, what kind of documentation, you know, like, would you, would you want to see that this person business has plan. like done their due diligence? and Just a business plan? Okay. I would legit, I, if, if I don't get a business plan, I don't even look at it. If I don't get a PowerPoint deck, I won't look at it. Because the reason you do business. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we have a pitch. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, I, mean, I have, yeah, we have like the pitch deck and we had the financials, the, the projections and all these kind of things, but it was more like the actual, the, the yeah, just the, the product itself. I mean, we've done a lot of research. We've done a lot of things around that and we have people interested in stuff, you know, ready to help us and, you know, build this thing with us already. And so I'm just doing my job as an IT guy right you know to, as a to you know to produce to, to, to produce this document so when you know people like somebody like you or somebody like david Meltzer or some other some other folks that we're working you know talking talking to or seeing this stuff they're like okay and so that's that's what kind of i'm doing right now and so i'm just trying to i found some stuff online and things like that um that, I'm, that i may have to show some people but i'm just trying to find out like is there besides beyond a business plan like the the, the nitty-gritty of the actual product itself you know is you know is there something that or is that just part of the, 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 the like the larger document type thing, or or is there something like specific that you know that you would look for for like a new piece of software or an app or a piece of tech that would you know tell you that this? Um, no, I mean for me I in particular, I don't. I, it, it's it's not necessarily 
it's the ability in the marketplace, but it's also the execution of it, right? The ability mm-hmm. to execute what you're trying to do. Correct. So, so, you know, without knowing really specific, really, really specifics, which is, you know, probably a discussion we should have on, offline. Um, but it, it, it's very, very hard for me to give you a very, very specific, but I will tell you that anything I pitch, it's, there's two things. What is the pitch? Is the pitch going to make sense for me in five minutes? Most people only have two minutes. And number two, you know, what is my identifying marketplace? So I'll give you an example. When I was doing energy drinks in 2008 to 2009, we were reading a guy named Eric Crown. This guy's like a billionaire. You own insight. Mm. I'm sitting with this guy going back and forth. And Eric just sits there and says to me, I'm consulting with this company. He goes, well, you know, of all the people in the world, you know, I just spoke to Snoop Dogg last week. You want to energy drink? Everyone wants to energy drink. Why would I want to work with you guys and put in money? Mm-hmm. So I identified what I told what I told him was I said, because I'll get you into China, mm-hmm. the one market that no one else can get him into. And when I said that to Eric, Eric goes, "I'll, I'll sign a five million dollar check." Nice. You see, mm-hmm. it's the insights and the ability to to give them something that's a little bit different. And he was like, you know, that did Snoop Dogg, that out did anyone else that came into it, because he understood that that was a value that we could have. You have to have a value added proposition. Your value added proposition, Jordan, is the military. You're in IT. You should yeah, be totally. looking into those type of things. You're a minority. Mm-hmm. You know, you're a vet. You yeah, should, well, you should war, be looking after yeah, those yeah, type yeah, of projects. Yeah, actually, actual war veteran over here type thing. So well, thank you for serving. Mm-hmm. That, that's the type of stuff that you should be going into mm-hmm. and, and, and making those adjustments. So that's going to make a big difference on how we're going to do things and go from there. Cool beans. Right. Um, so I, I got five minutes, so I, I kind of want to talk about a quick, quick story before I jump on this next session and, and go from there. But, but here, here's, here's what I'm going to tell you guys. Right now in business, the hardest thing you can do is not invest back in yourself and what you're trying to do, right? That's the hardest thing in business. What we have to realize is your clientele is having a very hard time staying afloat. They might not look like it, but when Rolex shuts down and Nike has issues and MGM is laying off 20,000 people, that's a problem. And if the big boys don't have the cash flow to run their businesses and do what they have to do, what you need to realize very, very quickly is for you to stay in the market, the next six months in your head, it might not be what you want, but if you can't do it, is you want to be able to break even in the market and make a little bit of money and keep your team afloat. That's the accomplishment. You have to readjust your expectations. That's the first mm-hmm. thing. The second thing that I would probably tell you is, and, and this is absolutely true at this point in time, is you don't want to just readjust and go from there. That's how you keep your team members from jumping over to other people, right? By readjusting your market and, and growing the brand, you start by them and they'll be very, very grateful for it. That's how you command a community of love, right? If you're buying a product or if you're sourcing product out of another country, you should have right now ready to go six months worth of product to seven months so you don't run into a supply chain issue. Let me tell you why. I do manufacturing in China a lot and everyone was doing PPE. What happened was all the major lines that were doing vapes and doing batteries, they were all switching off the PPE for two reasons. One, they want to help the world, but two, they want to make stupid amounts of money. So the manufacturer guys are doing the same thing. What happened to all the products? If you're ordering from Amazon or eBay, you were getting products two, three, four, five weeks behind. Right now in the marketplace, what you have to consider is that we are in September. In Australia, it is the winter time, right? So New Zealand is shut down. Australia has pretty much controlled it. But Australia, during the winter, they now shut down their country again to a stage four because there's an uptick in COVID, which means... In September, October, November, December, January, February, because of the weather, there will be an uptick in COVID that's here. So having your products ahead of time, ready to go, so you don't screw up your supply chain management or any issues if you're trying to source and buy from Asia, your side hustles, your gear, uh, your clothing, whatever you're trying to do is now the time because typically you can't get products in November and December because it's already the holidays. You should be ordering now in October but you're definitely not going to get it in January because of the holidays. And then Chinese New Year comes around in February. So now you're, in, you know, in the manufacturing, we call it dead season. That's four months. Now you have to factor in COVID. And if COVID happens again, God forbid, in other countries, there'll be an uptick in PPE. 
which means there'll be less product for you to actually source and produce out. And that becomes a major problem. What is my point of that story? My point of story is if you don't think ahead of the game, six months around and read things like The Economist, you're not gonna know how to prepare and win and beat everybody out. For my seafood company, when this COVID thing happened, I bought six fridges, six freezers, before anyone else did and stocked everything. So when people are running out of king crab and people are running out of food, I had it. And my sales went up dramatically because I had it. I went else in the market had it. That's the strategy. You gotta know things like that, right? That's the value of things that you can do. And that's how you can uptake and, and break past your competitors. All right, Mike, I got, I got one last question. You can definitely answer it if you, if you ask it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, I'll keep it quick. I, I have a question that has to do with delegation specifically when it comes to remote workers and people that aren't physically uh, in there. your little radius, right? So I don't know if you have any advice or input that, that could be helpful with, with that type of growth. How often are you talking to these people that you're, you're How working with? How often are you talking to these people that you're working with? Uh, on my end, it's maybe uh, every other day or so. A lot of it is done through Slack mostly, where it's just conversations that are very quick messages and updates. Um, but as far as phone calls, those are probably twice a week. Okay. So my whole NACL team is remote. All around the world, all around the places. What I've realized about remote is there's two things you have to realize. One, you have to work with the remote person. We're in unprecedented times. A mother who has to take care of their kids, if they can't take them to school, cannot help you with the job that they need to do or give it your full because they have to wait until the dad gets home or the brother gets home, the sister gets home. So what you should be doing is you should be targeting the task instead of the time. In other words, I don't care what you do and when you do it. I don't care if you sign on or not. All I care about is by this day and this, by this time, you get the task done because they will, that will increase morale, number one. And number two, if a single mother is trying to teach their kids, how the hell is she going to do your job? And she has no choice but to do your job so that she doesn't ignore her kids. But don't you think a single mother would be completely appreciative if you said it wasn't due by five, but it was due the end of the day that time. So by 12 o'clock that day, 12 a.m., she still can sleep five hours or six hours, take care of her kids and still do her job. People will be more efficient at this point. They don't care about the eight hour work days or 10 hour work days, it's the efficiency side of it, right? That's one, work with their times. Traditional, traditional businesses don't work. Number two, we do a list where we do a lot of Google Sheets. So I literally, every company I own, I have at least once a week meetings, twice a week meetings, three times a week meetings, and I will sit there with them on Zoom and I will break down every question over and over and over again until I understand that they understand it and then we'll move forward. I literally talk to them all the freaking time because I have to be on them. The biggest fear and the biggest thing that's gonna happen to anyone that's working remotely is the following thing, which is what I told you guys last week. They're gonna put in all their effort and their time. They're all trying to balance life. They don't know how to do it. And they're not gonna understand what you're saying and they're gonna, they're gonna give it to you. And then you're gonna be pissed because it, was just, it wasn't what it needed to be. And they can't sit there and ask you a question immediately, right? To be directed in the right way. But if you start from the very, very beginning part of it and you understand that they understand the, the basic specific guidelines that are there, and then they make those adjustments, then you've actually saved efficiency and time by being on them and making sure that they're following the same thing. So if I have a team that's, make, that's making a PowerPoint presentation right now, I said, listen, before you put all the graphics, and all that other shit, I don't really care about, set, let me make sure that you understand my message and then you can work on the graphics, right? And I'm following up with them on a daily, where is this at, what we're doing, I'll text them, you know, have you had this yet, can I help you out? Not necessarily monitoring them, but giving them the support that they need. And like right now, you know, Newt and Honor aren't here, Newt's in Hugh, driving to Houston because his grandma's birthday is coming up and Anna is headed out to take a test tomorrow. I'm like, yo, I need this by Friday. Here's a task ahead. I, don't, I know you're driving all day Thursday. I don't care what time Friday, I just need it by Friday. Life happens. You got to accommodate with them because all you're gonna do is keep beating your head on the wall if you do it the traditional way and they're gonna hate you for it because they don't have a choice. You can't do anything about it. So work with them on that and check on them daily and I guarantee you'll make a big difference. 
That's awesome, David. I like the the idea of a weekly uh, session. Can you elaborate just a little bit? I know you only have so much time uh, on what you do on those sessions. You mean with my teams? Uh, you were talking about the Google about sheet that you have for every week. Yeah. So, so I'm so every company I have, I'm at least at least once a week on a call with them on Zoom, going over everything and making sure it follows the direction it's supposed to be. For companies like NACL, which is a lot of production and hosting, we do it two times a week. And then I still talk to my individual team members in between. So it just depends what it is. For downtown spaces, you know, I'm there, but I, I, it's at least once a week. You know, you have to realize a lot of people, they're afraid to call you and contact you. And I had, I had to tell my manager, I was like, listen, you cannot wait for me to show up there because my schedule is packed, jam-packed every single day. Like I started at eight this morning, I'll finish by 11 p.m. tonight. And then I still got to call China. And I said, what you have to realize is it's so jam packed that if you're waiting for me, you're not being efficient, text me and I will answer back as soon as I can because you need answers. She was getting frustrated because she's waiting for me to show up. I'm getting frustrated. I'm like, dude, why do you keep, why are you waiting for me to show up when you need urgent answers? That's that miscommunication. So if you open the door to, you know, hire personnel and say, Hey, I need, if you need to talk to me, just text me no matter what I'm doing, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Most people don't know they can do that, man. There's that layer. Right? You're the boss. You're the head guy. You're the manager of the team. You're, you're, you're the guy who runs a podcast. You, you own my, you know, the website company. So I don't know if I can do that. But if you open that, that door up, it will actually allow you to be more efficient because most of the time they're waiting because they're just afraid to ask. And we've all been in that situation before, right? That's why. You got you to think like them. That's why the book matters. That's, the book matters. That asks, that's a great question uh, answer thank you i appreciate it my man um all right guys i jumped in my other session thank you for your time i appreciate you guys i'll talk to you guys soon uh, you, same time next week uh, mike you're gonna be on a, a, at the six o'clock session not the five so it's six o'clock i'll pass the time if you can make that one if you can't we'll do some but that's how we can advance your lessons because you're ahead christian jordan ivanska you know, feel free to invite people, especially Christian. I know a lot of new guys want to do it, but they have to sign on the website or they're not going to get the information that they need. And they can't, and I, I can't, you know, message everyone every single week because I just don't have the time to do that. So the website helps That's a lot right. and you can invite them. Ivanska, I know your friend or whoever else wants to join the session. They're more than welcome to do these on the website. Okay. Mike, keep making me proud, man. I'll see you guys later. See you, I'll see you later, right. David. Thank you very much.